Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top seven reasons why your refrigerator has frost building up. Stick around to the end of the video for an important tip that can help save you money. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the water supply underneath the sink. First thing to check is the defrost thermostat. It's a safety device that shuts off the defrost cycle if the freezer gets too warm. Defrost thermostats cut the power off to the heater if the temperature gets too hot. This is so it doesn't get too hot in the freezer section and starts melting the frozen food. They usually have a temperature rating stamped on them to tell you what temperature they turn the power off to the heater. Depending upon the manufacturer, it could be either in Fahrenheit or Celsius. Sometimes they're marked with a C or an F and sometimes they're not. They vary in temperature, so check your thermostat to see what it's rated at. This one's rated at 6040 Celsius. That means it shuts the power off at 60 degrees Celsius and turns the power back on when it cools down 40 degrees Celsius below that at around 20 degrees. Once the temperature goes below that, the power to the heater is restored. The thermostats are usually mounted behind the back wall of the freezer section on the evaporator. If the evaporator and back wall of the unit are frosted up, it could be that the thermostat has failed and power isn't being sent to the heater. To test it, first make sure the thermostat is colder than the reset temperature. It's best to test it in the freezer so it's right around 0 degrees Fahrenheit to be sure it's under the reset temperature. In order to see if the part can carry an electric current, we have to test it with a multimeter set to continuity. Once you have it set, touch the probes together to make sure it's working. Depending upon your design, you may just have to unplug the wiring harness and touch a probe to each terminal. If not, you would have to cut the wires to make sure the thermostat is removed from the system and then test each wire. Touch a probe to each terminal or wire. If the thermostat has continuity when it's cold, then it's fine and you can splice and seal it back in. If it doesn't, then it's failed and needs to be replaced. If you need to order a part, simply go to AppliancePartsPros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. Now we need to look at the defrost timer. It controls the defrost cycle of the refrigerator. The defrost timer is made up of a motor, gears, and contacts. It switches the refrigerator between the cooling and defrost cycles and helps keep the evaporator free of ice buildup. They have a set number of hours for cooling and minutes of defrost. As an example, this one will run for 8 hours and defrost for 30 minutes. Defrost timers are usually mounted in the control section of the refrigerator, but on older models, they may be behind the kick panel. If the evaporator and back wall of the unit are frosted up, it could be that the defrost timer has failed. In order to check and see if the timer motor is advancing, you can mark the shaft of the timer and then check later to see if it's moved. If it didn't, then the motor or gears have failed and the defrost timer will have to be replaced. You can also manually advance the timer with that center shaft. Use a flat blade screwdriver to advance the timer. It will click as you do. Then it will make a louder click as it goes into defrost. When you're in defrost mode, the compressor should stop running and the heater should come on. In order to find out, you'll have to temporarily turn the power back on. You must do this when the freezer compartment is cold. Do not try it on a fridge that's been unplugged to defrost, otherwise the defrost thermostat will not let the heater come on. In order to tell if the heater is working, you'll have to access it behind the back wall of the freezer. After about one to two minutes, you should be able to feel the heat from it. If the heater doesn't come on, then do the checks for the heater and thermostat. If those parts check out okay, that usually means the contacts inside the timer are bad and won't send power to the heater. If the contacts are bad, then the defrost timer will have to be replaced. Next thing we need to look at is the defrost heater. It's what heats up to melt the ice buildup off the evaporator. There have been many different styles and shapes of defrost heaters, but they all do the same thing. They heat up during the defrost cycle to melt the ice off the evaporator so the refrigerator cools efficiently. They're usually mounted behind the back wall of the freezer section, along the sides and bottom of the evaporator. If the evaporator and back wall of the unit are frosted up, the heater may have failed. Once you have access to the heater, we'll have to test it for continuity. Remove the wires and touch each end with a test probe. 
If it doesn't have continuity, then the heater is bad and needs to be replaced. Now we can look at the ice dispenser chute door. It's what opens to allow the ice to come out of the dispenser. There are many different designs of ice dispenser chute doors, but they all do the same thing. They open to let the ice out when you press the dispenser arm, then close and seal the chute when you're done. The door is located in the dispenser area, usually behind the control panel. If the door is damaged or its seal has failed and it isn't sealing properly, it could allow cold and warmer to mix, causing the dispenser area on the door to get frost built up on it. In order to inspect the door, you'll have to use a putty knife or a small screwdriver to release the control panel frame. Once you have access to the door, inspect it for damage and replace if needed. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. Now we need to look at the defrost temperature sensor. It tells the control board the temperature by the evaporator. Defrost temperature sensors are white plastic sensor bulbs. They tell the control board the temperature during the defrost cycle and shut the power off to the heater if it gets too warm. Temperature sensors are often used in multiple places in the fridge, but here we're specifically referring to the one in the defrost system. These sensors are usually mounted behind the back wall of the freezer section on the evaporator. If the evaporator and the back wall of the unit are frosted up, it could be that the thermostat has gone bad and the defrost cycle isn't working properly. In order to test the sensor, we need to remove it from the system. Just like the defrost thermostat, you can follow the wires back to the nearest connection point to see if it unplugs, otherwise you may need to cut it out. Once you have access to either the wire harness or the individual wires, you'll need to check the ambient air temperature. In our case, it's 73 degrees Fahrenheit. The sensor will have a different ohms reading depending upon the temperature, so you'll have to look at your tech sheet to see what it should read. Our sheet says about 5400 ohms at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So set your meter to ohms. Our meter automatically detects whatever ohms are coming in, but you may need to set your meter to read the proper ohm level. Touch the probes to the wiring harness pins or bare wires, whichever you have, and check the ohms reading. It should be close to the one specified in your tech sheet. If it is, you can reinstall it, but if the reading's way off or you're not getting a reading at all, you'll have to replace it. Next, we need to inspect the freezer drain. It's where the water drains out during the defrost cycle. The freezer drain is usually located in the rear of the freezer behind the back panel. If it's frozen up or clogged, then water won't be able to drain. This will cause water to build up and leak out into the bottom of the freezer compartment, causing it to freeze up into a big chunk of ice. If it gets bad enough, it could let water drip onto the floor if it's a side-by-side, -side, or if it's a top-mount freezer, the water could drip down into the fresh food section. Once you have access to the drain, you want to inspect it to make sure there's no ice or food clogging it up. If it's clogged, you just need to remove the blockage, but if it's iced up, you'll have to either leave the unit unplugged to defrost, or pour hot water down the drain to clear it. Also, if you have one, inspect the drain tube that goes from the cabinet to the evaporator pan to make sure it's not clogged up. Once you have it cleared out, you can put the fridge back together. Last thing to look at are the door gaskets. They seal the refrigerator doors. They usually have one flat side with a magnet, while the other side has a rib that mounts it to the door. They seal the door when closed to keep the warm air out and the cold air in. The gaskets are mounted on the outer edge of the door, if there's frost buildup, it'll usually be in the freezer section. It could be that the door gasket is either really dirty, especially along the bottom, or it's deformed and allowing warmer, moist air into the freezer section, causing frost to build up. Inspect the door gaskets and clean them if needed. Sometimes the gaskets can get deformed, usually on the hinge side, so you might be able to use a hair dryer to heat up the gasket and reform it. It's rare, but sometimes the magnet inside the door gasket can fail and the magnet just won't hold on to the cabinet anymore. You should feel the magnet hold as you start to open the door, and it should hold on to the cabinet when you close the door. If the magnet is failing, the door gasket is damaged, or it's so badly deformed that you can't get it straightened out to allow the door to open and close properly, then you'll have to replace it. Now here's that money saving tip we mentioned earlier. If your freezer compartment isn't getting as cold as it used to, and your ice cream's getting soft, it could be that your condenser coils are dirty, Dirty coils can cause the freezer to run warmer than normal if the condenser and other components are covered in dust and pet hair. Dust and pet hair can insulate the coils, preventing them from working efficiently. This can also make the refrigerator run more and cause wear and tear to those components. 
Keeping the coils clean can improve your refrigerator's efficiency by 30%, so doing this can save you money on your electric bill and future repair costs. In order to clean them, you'll have to pull the refrigerator out and remove the rear access panel, then carefully clean the coils. Keep in mind that some may be accessed from the front. You may have to use a condenser cleaning brush to reach in there. Also, while you're back there, clean the compressor, condenser motor and fan blade, and wipe down everything else. Be sure you're careful not to damage anything, and make sure you do this at least once a year. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the appliance in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now, and if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.